God provided in Israel. Now, so Ruth left Moab, right? She went with her mother-in-law. Her husband, her, her husband had died. Her father-in-law had died. She went with her mother-in-law, Naomi, to Israel, to Bethlehem of, in Judea, of Judah. And God provided in his law a way for widows and fatherless to be able to survive. Did she own anything? No. Did she have a job? No. But God provided a way for her to do some work so that she could get food. She was able to go into the people's fields and the corners of the fields and the stuff that dropped from their arms, she could pick up. And she happened to go to a certain wealthy man's field. Remember the name of the field that she just, you think she just happened to go there? To her it seemed like it happened, but God was making sure it happened, wasn't he? Whose field did she go to? Starts with a B. Starts with a B. Do you remember? Bowser. Bowser. That's close. close. It has a B, an O, and a Z, but between the O and the Z is an A, so it's Boaz. Yeah, very close though. She ended up in Boaz's meal, and Boaz knew how she had turned from her idols and came back to help her mother-in-law. He, he knew that she was a good lady and what hard work she was doing, and he told his servants to leave some extra food for us. And then God provided protection for Ruth. And he provided that in a couple different ways. Remember, God told, or Boaz told Ruth, you can just go to my, come to my fields all the time and stay with the other ladies that work for me. That way you don't need to go from one field to another. And Naomi said to Ruth, Jackson, Naomi said to Ruth, make sure you do that. Now sometimes when we get instruction from other people telling us what to do, we go like, I want to do what I want to do, right? Don't we do that sometimes? But most of the time when an adult, our teachers or our parents are telling us something to do, it's good if we do that. They, we, and when we obey, we're being protected. Stop messing with that. And that's what happened. Naomi said, go to those fields. Ruth went to those fields. She was protected from evil men that might have been in other fields. And they found out that Boaz was somebody special to them. What was special about Boaz? Beside that he was rich and he was kind. Do you remember? You were going to say he was rich and he was kind, weren't you? No? Okay, does anybody else remember? Even the older kids? Remember what was diff what was special about Boaz? He is? He was part of family. He was what? Part of family. He was part of their family. That's right. And Naomi and Ruth, they had nothing. But God, had, God wanted their land to stay in their family. And while they were gone in Moab, somebody else had come along and bought it. But the law allowed for that land to be bought back. The word is redeemed. God allowed for that land to be redeemed so it could be brought back into their family. But did Ruth or Naomi have any money to be able to redeem their own land? They couldn't redeem themselves, could they? They needed somebody rich who had the ability and the power and he also needed to want to do it. And when Ruth told Boaz, you know, you are a near kinsman, you are a relative, you, will you redeem us? Will you pay for our land and marry me? What did Boaz say? Anthony? He said, yeah, but he couldn't because there was another closer relative. That's right. He said, I want to, but there's a closer relative. We have to give him a chance. And today we're going to find out 
what happened. And if you know the story, you kind of know what happened. So don't jump ahead. Stay with me. That morning, Boaz went to the, to the town gate. And it was busy. There was a, a good number of people around. It's not a big town. But there was enough people around. Boaz was there. And he saw the close relative. And he said, hey there, come here and sit down. I want to talk to you about something important. Now, we know what he wanted to talk to him about, right? And this was a very important thing. This is the transfer of land from one person to another. It's not something you just do one-on-one. -on -one. you got to have witnesses so that people would know that this was a legal, legal thing. And so he sat down, and then Boaz got ten leaders, ten elders, they call them, ten leaders of the town to sit down. So we have ten leaders witnessing, watching this, and we have the closer relative, the closest relative there, and Boaz. And Boaz begins to tell the close relative. He says, you know that Naomi has returned from Moab, and she has a piece of land that she would like to sell, that she needs to have bought. And the closer, and, and you are the closer relative. I would, if you want the land, you can buy it. But if you don't, I would like to buy it. And the man, he thought, that's good land. I know about that land. That would be good land to add to my properties. And my kids could have them after I pass along. And I, yes. I will buy Naomi's property. And Boaz then, he said, but just remember, or just know, that when you buy Naomi's property, you also have to marry Ruth, Naomi's daughter-in-law, so that the land will stay in Naomi's family. And the man probably thought something like this, Ruth, she's a foreigner. She doesn't have any money. She is, you know, I don't, I'm already married. I already have kids. I don't, he said, I, I don't mind the land, but I don't want that. You can have it. You can have the land, and you can marry Ruth. So Boaz said, all right, all of you ten men, you witness this. This man does not want to redeem, which means what? To buy back. He does not want to redeem the land of Naomi, and he does not want to marry Ruth, and I will redeem it. When you think word spread around, there's a man saying, I am going to buy Naomi's land, and I am going to marry Ruth. And so, in those days, there was a custom that when you were making an agreement like this, the man who refused to buy the land would take his shoe off. It, we don't do this these days. Of course, we all have our shoes off. But He would take his shoe off, and Boaz took the shoe, and they made a solemn oath, a solemn agreement that was witnessed by ten people, and said, so you are witnessing that I am going to redeem, buy back Naomi's land, and I am going to marry Ruth. Did Ruth deserve Boaz's kindness? Did Ruth, was Ruth able to purchase this kindness? Could Ruth buy the land herself? No. You know what? The Bible tells us that this event is very much a picture of something else. A picture of something that happens every time Jesus redeems a sinner. Every single one of us have a debt that needs to be paid. It's almost like we have land, but we can't buy it. We're sinners. And with our sin, we can't get to heaven. We need somebody to take care of that sin for us, to redeem us, so that we can go to heaven. Just like Ruth and Naomi needed somebody to redeem their land, so that they could be free. And Boaz is a picture of Jesus who did that for us. Jesus was God, but Jesus became... So God is not a man, is he? 
Boaz could do this redemption because he was a... No. He was a relative. Boaz, he was a, was a relative. And Jesus decided to become like men. Right? He was born as a baby and he grew up. He decided to become like men so that he could redeem us. He made himself to be a relative. Didn't he? And as a relative, as a man, he paid the redemption price. You think it was cheap for Boaz to buy that land? No. And he got land, but with did Ruth have any money to bring into that marriage? No. Boaz gladly paid the price. And Jesus gladly paid the price for our redemption. Boaz paid money for the land. What did Jesus pay to redeem every single person who turns from their sin and believes on him? What did Jesus pay? Blood. Blood, yes. Whose blood? Yeah. His blood, which means that he died. He died so that every single person who will turn from their sin and believe on him can be redeemed. And every single one of those people, every single one of us, every single one of you, that turns from your sin, we have this opportunity, but is it because we are anything special? Do we bring anything to God like, I'm such a great person, God, you want to redeem me? That's not true, is it? God doesn't need any of us. But Jesus redeemed us by his, because of his grace. He loved us even though we didn't deserve loving. He redeemed us even though he didn't get anything out of the deal. All he got was a sinner. And Jesus, Boaz, reminds us of Jesus. Boaz purchased the land. He announced that he was going to marry Ruth. And I'm sure it wasn't long until they had a wonderful, happy wedding. Because then the Bible tells us not long you know, in the process of time, after they were married, Ruth had a baby boy. And that baby boy would carry on the name of the land in the land of Israel. The Bible tells us in Ruth that... Do you remember... No, we don't have time for that. We already talked about it. Remember who Boaz... Did I tell you who Boaz's mother was? I might have forgot that last week. Boaz's mother was Rahab. Do you remember Rahab when the children of Israel marched around the city of Jericho? She lived in Jericho and she put the red cord out the window. Rahab, was Rahab one of the children of Israel? No, she was from Jericho. But she married an Israelite man who came along, and they, she had several children, and one of them was Boaz. And so then Boaz marries Ruth, and she has a child named Obed. And Obed, when he grows up, he gets married, and he has a child named Jesse. And then Jesse grows up, and he has some children, and his eighth son is named David. Anybody ever heard of David? David and Goliath? David, the mighty king of Israel. So Ruth got to be David's great-grandmother, or great-great-grandmother. God blessed her even more than just letting her um, be redeemed. He brought her into the special family of his that would, David's great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great, like 28 people down the line, was Jesus. Yes. So, Ruth became a part, she, she, was, she, she was a widow, Boaz brought her into his family. Now, there were special, do you think Ruth, after she was Boaz's wife, do you think she had to go out in the field and pick, pick crops? No, she's the wife of the owner, right? Do you think she had to work really hard? Not anymore. Boaz had 
women that worked in the fields, he had men that worked in the fields, and now she is Boaz's wife. She's privileged. And that's what happens to people who believe on Jesus. He redeems them, and then he brings them into his family. When you're saved, you become a child of God. You will live forever. You have eternal life, which means you can fellowship with God. God shares his riches, his blessings with us. And our sins are forgiven. If you have never turned from your sin and believed on Jesus, you need to do that. Everyone needs to do that. I say this often, but we have young children here who don't always understand that right away. But some of you are older. If you realize that you're a sinner, you should realize that your sin is sending you to hell. And there's nothing you can do to get away from hell. But God has provided a way to redeem you. To pay the price so that you don't have to go to hell and you can be a part of his family. Once you've realized that you're a sinner and that you deserve hell from God, you need to remember what we've taught here at Bible Club. That you can turn to Jesus, turn from your sin that you're doing. I don't want to sin anymore. Turn to God. Believe on Jesus. He will save you. He will redeem you. Jesus is God. And when you believe on him, God will begin to have fellowship with you. He will let you into his family, and you will have eternal life, and have your sins forgiven. And when you die, you won't go to hell, will you? You will go to heaven to live with God in his home, and Jesus, and everyone else who's believed that. So, but that happens because we've been redeemed. We don't have the money for it. We can't pay the price for it. Jesus paid the price when he shed his blood, when he died on the cross, and then he was buried and he rose again from the dead. 